There are few vehicles more easily recognisable or indeed influential in the annals of automotive history as the Volkswagen Microbus and the Volkswagen Beetle. The pair of vehicles in their original guise, despite Volkswagen's unpleasant connections to the horrors of Nazi Germany, shrugged off their roots and became icons of both the automotive world of the latter half of the 20th century and icons for an entire generation of social change and freedom. The original rear-wheel drive air-cooled Beetle, or Type 1 to give it its official name, remained in production somewhere in the world from 1938 all the way through until 2003. 21 and a half million examples were built. It was given a spiritual successor in the form of the new Beetle, a car that tried to recreate the original style and status, albeit with a water-cooled front-mounted front-wheel drive setup that existed from 1997 through to 2011, before then being succeeded by the last car to wear the Beetle nameplate. That car, simply called the Volkswagen Beetle, was in production from 2011 until three years ago when it ended its production. The Volkswagen Microbus though, the Type 2 as it was known, while it's enjoyed a lot of time in the limelight in everything from movies and TV shows through to songs, it was nearly in production as long as the Beetle, but never had a spiritual successor capable of capturing its original quirky and sometimes temperamental character. Sure, there was the Volkswagen Transporter, but it never really captured the same joie de vivre as the original Microbus. That is, until this week, when Volkswagen officially unveiled the production Volkswagen ID Buzz Microbus and ID Buzz Cargo. TARDIS-like in their design and simple in their execution, this duo of electric vehicles are what Volkswagen hopes will bring one of its most iconic vehicles into the 21st century. And today, we're going to explore them both. But first, don't forget to click like, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. And according to YouTube, who finally reached out to us, make sure you've got your notifications turned on for your phone and the bell icon settings for YouTube. Look, I know it's complex and convoluted, but apparently if you do all of that, YouTube will actually tell you when we have new content for you to enjoy. And no, don't blame us, please. We're just the content making monkeys suffering the monopolistic world of online content creation. <laughs> anyway, back to Volkswagen and its ID Buzz. And for some history, Volkswagen has made noises about wanting to produce an electric version of its iconic microbus for more than a decade. It was 2011, you know, before Dieselgate and Volkswagen's shift towards EVs, when the Bully EV was first unveiled at the Geneva Auto Show. It looked more like a Volkswagen Transporter than a Volkswagen Microbus, but it certainly started the design conversation which would ultimately lead us to the ID Buzz. Then, at CES 2016, Volkswagen unveiled the Buddy EV concept. It was a few scant months since Dieselgate had rocked the auto industry and a far fresher-faced Herbert Diess took to the stage to eat some metaphorical humble pie and promise Volkswagen would do better. The Buddy had a large 101 kilowatt hour battery pack and twin motor all wheel drive, as well as a heavy amount of in car tech, including gesture control, voice recognition, and bizarrely, a digital illuminated faux front grille. I saw it up close and personal that year, and well, it was certainly a concept car not a production vehicle. But the ID Buzz concept, well, that followed a year later in Detroit, and it was the first time I felt a vehicle really captured the essence of the original VW Microbus. Sure, it still had the digital rear view mirrors of the Bud E, not to mention lots of LED lightning, but it also captured the invincible go anywhere spirit of the original Type 2. This week, after an agonizing five-year wait, the ID Buzz became reality. Externally, it's pretty close in its design to that concept of five years ago. Yes, it ditches some of the external styling elements of the concept for more practical alternatives, you know, 
like real door handles and rear view mirrors, but that makes it feel closer, not further away from the Volkswagen microbus it is so clearly meant to evoke fond memories of. And, and let's be clear here for a moment, Volkswagen isn't the first automaker to take an icon of yesteryear and give it an update for the modern era. Ford has electrified its Mustang and its F-150 for exactly the same reason as Volkswagen is electrifying the microbus. And in Europe, there's a whole slew of automakers from Renault to Opel seeking to reimagine their icons of yesteryear with an electrified heart. OK, enough waxing lyrical. Let's get to the meat of what makes the ID Buzz and ID Buzz Cargo run. Oh, and unless I say otherwise, from now on, if I say ID Buzz, I mean both the passenger carrying microbus and the cargo variant, because saying ID Buzz and ID Buzz Cargo every time, it's going to get old. Based on the same MEB platform as the rest of the Volkswagen ID family, the ID Buzz features a 77 kilowatt hour usable battery pack, that's a nominal 82 kilowatt hours, driving a rear mounted 150 kilowatt electric motor. This makes the new model the first Volkswagen microbus since the original Type 2 to be rear motor, rear wheel drive. While the battery pack is the largest of the ID battery packs available on other ID vehicles at the moment, there's something interesting to note about the charging. Unlike the ID4, which has a maximum charge rate of 135 kilowatts from a compatible CCS charging station, the ID Buzz has a maximum charge rate of 170 kilowatts. Remember though that maximum charge rate does not mean sustained charge rate, and I'm guessing real world charging experience between both vehicles will be pretty similar. Oh, and just like the rest of the ID family now rolling off the production line, the ID Buzz will ship with plug and charge as standard. That's a feature which makes it really easy to charge, especially when you have screaming children in the back who need a wee wee, which, let's face it, is likely to happen a lot with an ID Buzz microbus. In Europe, where three phase power is common in homes, the ID Buzz will also have 11 kilowatts of AC charging capability, meaning charging from empty to full at home using a three phase station could take as little as seven hours. While Volkswagen doesn't detail the actual range of the ID Buzz, we would be remiss for not pointing out that the tall body and blunt nose isn't exactly the most aerodynamic shape out there and thus you're unlikely to match the range of the ID3 or in fact ID4, 5 or 6. And since Volkswagen acknowledges that the ID Buzz is the largest vehicle to be built on the MEB platform, I think it's quite telling that range isn't currently listed. That said, Volkswagen promises more battery options in the future, hinting perhaps at a longer legged version in the offing. What is worth noting though is that the fact that because the ID Buzz has a rear wheel drivetrain and no frunk, it's able to enjoy an impressive 11 meter 36 feet turning circle. That's the same as a Volkswagen Golf, despite it having the same wheelbase as the larger and far less nimble Volkswagen T6 Transporter. Let's take it inside, where your ID Buzz is less fancy than your average SUV, but it does ooze a lot of practicality. Unlike the concept, which had seven seats, the ID Buzz Microbus currently maxes out at five seats, with the rear seats coming with adjustable positioning to give extra legroom to rear seat passengers or give you more cargo space. Also worth noting, a lever next to the rear sliding doors on each side, which I'm going to presume is to make it easier to fold the rear seats down, something that's usually found on triple row vehicles. Does that mean there's going to be a third row option in the future? Well, Volkswagen confidently says yes, with a three by two row seating six people coming soon, as well as promises of an extended wheelbase in the future that will seat seven. Details on both are expected in the coming year. Even with that rear seat up though, the rear cargo space is 1,121 litres or 39 cubic feet. For those playing bingo, that is larger than the positively cavernous 
37 cubic feet offered in the Tesla Model X. And no, I'm not seriously comparing the two. I just want to remind you that different vehicles are built for different things. And the ID Buzz, even the Microbus variant, is most certainly built to haul things. Talking of which, the ID Buzz cargo, with only one row of seats, is capable of accommodating two Euro pallets worth of stuff, with up to 600 kilos, 1322 pounds, of carrying capacity inside the vehicle, and an additional 100 kilos, 220 pounds, or one me, sitting on the roof. Up front, the ID Buzz cargo can be configured with either the same two seat arrangement as the microbus or a bench passenger seat next to the driver that can accommodate two passengers for a total of three up front. Since the ID Buzz has its gear selector on the steering column like the rest of the ID family and the parking brake is electronic, there's absolutely nothing to get in the way of a three up arrangement. But sadly, I don't think we'll see a three up microbus front seat. Behind the wheel, there's certainly going to be an air of familiarity with the rest of the ID family, since the ID Buzz uses exactly the same dash layout and screens as the ID 3, 4, 5, and 6. Obviously, you're actually sitting more upright because microbus, but I'd suggest if you've driven an ID of some description before, this will feel very familiar. But what really got my attention was the passenger side area, where Volkswagen has added an open shelved storage area reminiscent of the original Microbus's one above a more modern style glove box. The space between the front seats is left open at floor level with a simple center console for storage at seat level. And also worthy of note are the painted surfaces all around, which remind me very much of the painted bare metal in the original Microbus. To finish out, let's talk tech. There's a host of advanced driver assistance technologies, including the latest version of Volkswagen's Travel Assist, complete with assisted lane change, trained parking capabilities, and most importantly, vehicle to infrastructure swarm data. This means if a Volkswagen ID has driven along your road before, your bus will be able to drive along it using its semi-autonomous driving system, and it won't need to see lane markings to keep in place. Volkswagen says pedestrian alerts and automatic braking also come as standard, and all ID Buzz variants will feature vehicle to infrastructure technology and over the air updates. So vehicles can communicate with one another, smart street furniture, and Volkswagen's swarm computer system too. Oh, and lest I forget, there's also vehicle to home, a feature which is mercifully becoming a must have for any self respecting new electric vehicle on the market today. The vehicle to grid will be rolled out too in the future, says Volkswagen, just as it will be for the rest of the ID family. Both the ID Buzz and ID Buzz Cargo will launch in Europe this year, with production due to start in the first half of this year. The order books will open in select European markets in May, and the first deliveries are due to take place in the third quarter. As for North America and other markets, while we don't have a full list of countries where the ID Buzz will go on sale yet, Volkswagen of North America has confirmed the long wheelbase ID Buzz will break cover in North America in 2023. So hello three row camping fun, but it will have a retail launch for the same in 2024. That's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links to help you out below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live, as well as all the other things I said earlier on. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew. Go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. That's Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, 
Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Dean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Zachary Courtney, Chrissa Centaur, and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennersley, and Ian. If you would like to join our amazing team of supporters, you'll find links below for Patreon, or you can click the join button on YouTube to become a channel member. And you can also even show your support through Bitcoin, Ko-fi, or our cool swag store. And if you are in the US and you would like to send us a good old fashioned check, you'll find our PO box on our website. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. <laughs> <laughs>